Mackenzie Johnston with Cattle News Central, bringing you your April 18th cattle industry headlines, brought to you by Ag Risk Advisors. They provide risk management programs to livestock producers all across the West. Whether you are concerned about price or weather risk, Ag Risk Advisors, they are here to help. With current day market fluctuations, you and I both know there is nothing more important than locking in a price floor on your cattle. So if you'd like to learn more about an LRP, go ahead and reach out to an advisor. We are also sponsored by American Beef Producer Magazine. They offer in-depth articles on a wide variety of topics within the industry. They feature award-winning photography and so much more within their publication. If you'd like to check out their most recent edition, their April issue, all you got to do is click on the American Beef Producer link above in the caption. That is going to take you over to their Facebook page where you can do just that. American Beef Producer Magazine, guiding beef producers for over 25 years. According to data released by the USDA, the beef retail price was $7.69 per pound in March. That was up about 1% compared to the month before and up 18.6% year over year. The March all fresh beef price was $7.36 per pound and that was also up about 1% compared to uh, February, but it was up more than 15% compared to a year ago. So some pretty significant increases. In March, ground beef and boneless stew beef broth both set record prices. Ground beef increased 17.7% compared to last year at this time, and that got up to $4.76 per pound. Boneless stew beef increased 24.3% compared to 2021, and that was up to $7.16 per pound. Other beef cuts that saw significant increases in price were the boneless were boneless chuck that was up uh, 14.8% and that landed at $6.99 per pound. Round roast increased 11.9% and that is up to $6.30 per pound. And finally, sirloin steak that is up 16.7% compared to last March and that is all the way up to $10.66 per pound. This update is also sponsored by Circle 5 Cow School. If you're wanting to learn how to preg check your own cows or start AIing, Circle 5 Cow School is definitely the way to go. Almost every week they are hosting classes somewhere between Texas and Tennessee. If you would like to check out their schedule, head on over to circle5cowschool.com. That is the number five in there, or you can go ahead and just give them a follow on Facebook. According to Drovers, looking to capitalize on the growing demand for products that are considered environmentally friendly, Silver Fern Farms in New Zealand is now offering USDA-approved net carbon zero Angus beef. Beginning the first week of March, American shoppers at 75 supermarkets in New York and selected markets in Los Angeles were able to purchase net carbon zero by nature Angus steaks and ground beef. Before this new product hit the market here in the United States, Silver Fern Farms had been supplying the U.S. market with its grass-fed product for over 40 years. Simon Limmer, he is the CEO of Silver Fern Farms, said New Zealand cattle producers have a deep connection to nature and they care about the environment. This new product shows that New Zealand producers can produce great tasting red meat in a way that is better for the planet. Silver Fern Farms' net carbon zero beef has the same bold, nutrient dense and unmatched texture of its 100% grass fed beef products. The New Zealand company plans to play a global leadership role in driving sustainability in the red meat sector and is working to reduce greenhouse gas emissions across the company's value chain. This update is also sponsored by 4T Ag Insurance, your go-to contractor for ag insurance. The folks at 4T Ag are dedicated to providing you with insight, information, and alternative, ri alternative risk solutions that are custom fit to your business and personal needs. They offer both crop and drought insurance, and they also offer LRPs for both fed and feeder cattle. If you'd like more information, head on over to their website, www.4tag.net. That is the number four, T-A-G.net. 
The Western Journal has reported that during an interview with MIT Technology Review, Bill Gates stated that he believes the world's richest nations should only eat synthetic beef, and the poorer nations, they can continue to eat traditional real meat. He believes that people living in these rich nations can get used to the taste difference. And it's not that big of a deal anyways, considering that these, uh, that these companies that are producing this big product, they're going to continue to make the product taste better. The government, the government will most likely have to use regulation to totally shift demand to synthetic beef in these rich nations, according to Gates. Gates went on to say, uh, went on to say for Africa or other poorer nations to make his plan work, animal genetics will need to be altered to significantly increase the amount of beef per emissions. So here's the funny thing, uh, and this is all straight from Gates. As we all know, U.S. livestock, they are incredibly productive and efficient. The emissions per pound of beef here in the U.S. is dramatically less than emissions per pound in Africa. Gates' foundation is currently working to take African livestock and cross them with U.S. genetics that are known for their productivity levels of both meat and milk. So basically what we're doing here in the United States when it comes to producing real meat, we're knocking it out of the park. But yet he wants a nation like us he would like us to switch over to synthetic beef. It's a good, great plan. Drovers has reported that JBS USA has committed to donating $700,000 to the University of Nebraska Foundation to support the University of Nebraska Lincoln and his plans to build a new feedlot innovation center near Meade, Nebraska. The feedlot innovation center will be built at the same location as the university's feedlot, and that is about 30 miles north of Lincoln, Nebraska. It will include a complex with cattle comfort and research buildings, a feed technology facility, innovative open lots, and an animal handling facility. This new center will provide new capacity to develop and evaluate emerging technology used in managing animals and feedlot settings. It will be used for teaching, research, and extension efforts by the Institute of Agriculture and Natural Resources. The Feedlot Innovation Center has an estimated construction cost of $5 million. The Institute of Agriculture and Natural Resources there at UNL, they've committed $2 million in funding with the NU Foundation leading a $3 million private fundraising initiative. To date, almost $2 million has been committed to it, committed in private support of this project. According to Seth Corin, President of the Fed Beef Division at JBS, this product, this project, excuse me, it aligns with the company's long-term commitment to the beef industry and its farmer and rancher partners in Nebraska and surrounding states. Additionally, the product, the project, goodness, the project, it has the potential to unlock breakthrough technologies that will benefit American producers, the climate, and JBS's pledge to achieve net zero greenhouse gas emissions by 2040. Other lead contributors to the Feedlot Innovation Center project include John and Beth Klosterman of David City. They graciously donated half a million dollars and Farm Credit Services of America, they, do they donated $300,000. That is all I have for you guys this morning. I hope you all had a wonderful Easter weekend. Have yourself a wonderful Monday. I'll catch you later.